What's going on everyone? My name is Lucas, and I know censorship is a thing that's done all around the world and by many companies, and it's understandable in some cases, but should that really prevent me from naming my FIFA squad Nigeria? What I have a Nigerian squad? <laughs> At the time of recording, the 2019 rendition of the U17 World Cup is about to start in Brazil. So, I think it would be a good time to look at a former winner who had three key players. Four years later, those players are now on different paths with varying levels of success. This was the 2015 rendition of the tournament, and it was always difficult to know which teams will do well. The players at this age are not fully developed physically, so sometimes the players who are further developed can cause more troubles than others. However, technically gifted players should be doing well too. That leads us to this tournament in 2015, and to Nigeria, who's completely dominated this age group. Prior to the start of this tournament, they had 4 World Cups to their name, along with 7 total medals. Spoiler alert! They would make it 8 if the title wasn't obvious enough. This group contained the United States of America, Chile, Croatia, and if you look at it on paper, you would think that this group would be quite challenging. For Nigeria, they would go out and finish on top. A 2-0 win over the USA, a resounding 5-1 thumping of hosts Chile, and a loss to Croatia, although Croatia needed the win more than Nigeria, and they certainly deserved it. 6 points was enough for first place, and that would lead to the round of 16 match versus Australia, who finished ahead of Argentina, but behind Mexico and Germany in their group. So, how bad could it be for Australia? I mean, when you have players casually finishing like this, what more can you do? That would lead them to the quarterfinal match versus Brazil. Okay, 6-0 against Australia was a breeze, but Brazil had to have put a bigger challenge, right? To be fair, the scoreline was a little flattering than how the match played out. Pretty even and good chances for both sides, but a little bit of luck helped out Nigeria on this one. That led to Nigeria's semi-final match against Mexico, but the Mexican coach decided to stir the pot. He claimed that there was no way that the Nigerian players were under 17 players. He stated the same thing about the other African semi-finalists, Mali. Now this age thing for African countries has been a thing for a long time. Some countries are better at regulating it than others, but it does happen. I remember reading a book called The Away Game by Sebastian Abad where a former Barcelona scout who helped launch Messi's career was given funding to find hidden gems of African talent. Now if you're wondering who funded this, my hint for you is that they're hosting the 2022 World Cup, Qatar. There were several cases where talented players found their way to one of the academy teams that these guys came up with. They were called the uh, Aspire teams, I believe, and this is where the players went to. One of them was in Africa, I believe in Senegal, and the other one was in Qatar. However, some of the players either lied about their age or didn't really have their accurate documents. While they were on their search for these players, the former Barca scout thought he found the one, the African Messi. Now this kid eventually went to the academy and he ended up actually going to the Qatar academy and was a very good player, but he eventually wanted to leave the academy and play in Europe. He wasn't allowed to leave because he technically wasn't 18 and there are FIFA rules around that and they over the years have become more and more strict about it. In reality, this guy was actually a few years older than his supposed age and to sum it up quickly, he unfortunately never really made a career. I do recommend the book though, it's very good. Although Nigeria does have a history of fielding overage players, FIFA has introduced a magnetic resonance imaging or better known as an MRI. The MRI scans the left wrist and is able to tell the age of a player and this has been used for these youth tournaments since 2009. There are doubts about the testing but it has banned many players in the past from competing in youth tournaments. Now that was a bit of a tangent but Nigeria's match against Mexico was quite successful. Even though Nigeria conceded first, they would end up winning 4-2. The first two goals in particular were insane. Mexico's second goal wasn't bad either. Nevertheless, Nigeria won the game, leading us to the final, an all-African encounter for the first time since 1993, where Nigeria defeated Ghana 2-1. This time, it was Mali who, like Nigeria, had several key players in this tournament. We'll mention the Nigerian ones soon, but Mali has two that are looking good right now. Haidara, who plays for RB Leipzig, and Koita, who plays for RB Salzburg, are guys worth keeping an eye on. 
in the Estadio Suasalito in front of supposedly 15,000 people. The final would take place. Nigeria would win the game 2-0 despite missing a first half penalty and somehow the rebound that followed. A successful tournament for the Super Eagles, which leads us to three players I hinted at earlier. Victor Osiman is for sure the best player coming out of this team, and probably the tournament. He won the bronze ball and won the golden boot with the most goals in U17 World Cup history with 10. Looking back at his goals, he was just unstoppable. He was taller than a lot of the players, faster than a lot of them, and his finishing was ridiculous. Such precise shots like the one against Australia made him stand apart. While his career after the tournament was rough as he moved to Wolfsburg and didn't really get the playing time he needed, he still found his way on a successful path. He just had to go to Belgium first, do well with Charleroi, and get a transfer to Lille where he hasn't looked back. At the time of recording, he has 7 goals in 10 games, which is near the top in Ligue 1. I have so much to say about this guy, but I'll have to save it for another video in the future. Samuel Chukweze was not the biggest star coming out of this team, but he was the first one to start to show something in one of the big 5 leagues. Coming out of this tournament, he won the bronze boot with 3 goals and 3 assists, although it was given to him a month after the tournament due to a mistake. He mainly is a right winger and possesses several skill sets which can help him become a fantastic player in the future. I haven't been able to watch his matches as much as I would like, but he has been getting game time with Villarreal. 26 matches last season, scoring 5 and assisting 2. This season, he's appeared in 8 matches and has already scored 2 and matched his assist total from last year with 2 as well. Definitely worth checking out if you watch La Liga. Kalechi Envakali. He was the best player in this tournament, winning the Golden Ball. He was the captain of Nigeria and he followed his older brother's footsteps by winning the tournament. With him winning the Golden Ball, I would have expected him to become the best player from this team, but sometimes that isn't the case. He joined Arsenal in 2016, but never played a match for them because he could never get a work permit. And Vakali had a few loan spells in the Netherlands and even one with Porto B. Yeah, I did say B, not even the main team. I don't really understand that one at face value and earlier this year, he wasn't even able to return to the club because he had visa problems. At the end of the summer, he ended up being let go to Huesca and still hasn't made an appearance. This is eerily similar to his brother who joined Manchester City when he was 18 but never made an appearance but instead went on multiple loans and now plays in Sweden. There's so much to say about him but maybe he'll be a late bloomer? Let's not forget, he's only 21. Stability is probably the most important thing for Envacali right now and hopefully he gets on the right track. Youth World Cups are always exciting because you could potentially be seeing the next big thing without even knowing it. However, players that you might think are really good sometimes don't pan out. In reality, a lot of the time they don't pan out. If we look back at 2007 from World Soccer Magazine, now I don't know how good of a magazine they are, but they made a list about the 50 most exciting teenage footballers from that year, and if you look at the list, I bet a lot of these players did not fulfill their potential. And also the players that did fulfill their potential, there are several players ahead of them on this list that we don't really hear about too much. However, that doesn't mean these youth tournaments aren't important. For some players, this is a starting point to their career. It can be the first time that they are seen by scouts and they can make a dream move to Europe and hopefully build upon their careers. Sadly, for some, this is as good as it gets and it's important for these guys to enjoy the moment. Alright, I know that was a little bit of a somber mood to end the video, so let's make it worse. Your favorite player one day is going to retire. The best player in the world one day is going to be younger than you. It's just going to happen. And you know what? That's okay. Kylian Mbappe is younger than me, and he's done more in his life than I probably ever will. <sighs> Thanks for watching, and if you excuse me, I'm just going to go and cry.